you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about smart house i am once again joined here in this video by my buddy dave from interpreting the stars to talk about smart house i actually tried to get dave to watch a disney channel original movie quite some time ago i wanted him to check out the movie brink that i ended up doing with benny wong kenobi or benny wong strikes back as he is known now and rishaji reviews and uh yeah he really wasn't interested in it he kind of turned me down and said like yeah i don't really want to do his disney channel original movie and since then we've collabed a lot more we've gotten to know each other a lot more i've given him a little bit more respectable films i'd say uh, than a disney channel original movie but uh yeah this time around he said yes to checking out smart house a disney channel original movie that i remember watching countless times as a kid i had so many nostalgic moments going back and re-watching this movie now going back and re-watching it yeah, not, this movie does not hold up, but uh, there was a lot about the film that I really did enjoy, and I just want to say a big thanks to Dave for being down to watch this Disney Channel original movie and be here in this collab. We're going to hear from him in just a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about Smart House. So Smart House came out in 1999. I was about six years old when this movie came out, and uh, I remember watching this movie on countless occasions. This was one of the very many movies that Disney kind of had on their constant reruns as far as Disney Channel original movies go, and yeah, on an overall, I had a good time going back and rewatching this movie but almost more out of a nostalgic this is kind of funny and silly to go back and revisit a childhood movie rather than it being necessarily a good movie now this movie does have its redeemable elements but it's not necessarily a movie i'm just going to go ahead and give out a flat uh, recommendation for for everybody to go ahead and check it out so what is smart house about well this movie follows a family specifically the son of the family that just won a contest uh, for their family to move into this smart house it's a house that has this military grade technology in it but you know in the movie they really act like it's not that big of a deal even though this house can literally do anything this house is essentially a ultra assistant siri on steroids this house literally cleans itself if you drop a liquid or even a solid there's literally a part of this movie where the characters have a party that they're kind of keeping secret from their dad and at the end of the party in order to hide everything that's you know been there all the cups, all the plates, all the food on the ground just gets absorbed into the ground. It's a very convenient house to live in. And yeah, over the course of this movie, we learn that the, the son of this film, is he's really the main character of this movie. And you learn that he is really struggling with the loss of his mom, who had passed away at this point quite some time ago, maybe four or five years ago. And uh, his dad is looking to move on and start to date people again. His sister's growing up, and her sister doesn't really remember his mom all that much. She remembers her from pictures and moments and videos but she didn't really have the connection to her mom but the son is the one that really had the connection to the mom and, and really misses her doesn't want her his dad to date and we learn throughout the course of the film that he's kind of been not being a part of the things that he wants to do hanging out with friends doing things like sports because he wants to be there for his family so that they don't feel like they need another figure in the house he doesn't want his dad or his sister to want another woman in the house at all so he kind of steps up to be this ultimate son ultimate big brother and kind of doesn't do things that he wants to do in his own life as a kid because he doesn't want that void of his mother to be filled by anybody else and i think right out of the gate that element of the film is something i really kind of was able to tap into you know i'm very grateful to still have both of my parents alive but i know friends who don't have parents or specific parents that have you know they've lost and you know i'm super sad and i think that this movie definitely if anything leans into that element the most about it and i think they do a really good job of handling the the idea of losing a parent and, and moving on so not long into having this super smart house that is slowly learning them and, and you know literally can do anything can use a wall that can display a landscape or an actual location and creates fake mist and fake air in order for you to be able to just see and be wherever you really want to be you could literally say you want to be on the beach and the wall would turn into the beach and you'd feel the wind and you'd hear the sounds and yeah it's a very over the top like it literally can do anything it wants kind of house and not too long into the movie the son ends up going into the motherboard the system of the house which makes no sense how he was able to do this but he ends up essentially shutting off a certain behavioral thing as well as kind of teaching the house how to be a better mother and over the course of the film she starts to become a very obsessive mother as the house and kind of forces them to do certain things and is constantly over the top about how she handles certain situations with them now before i continue rambling about this very random film let's go ahead and hear what interpreting the stars have to say about this hey it's your boy interpreting the stars sorry if it looks like i got beat up or something 
I promise I did not, but it would be cool if I did, right? Anyways, good to be back on Anthony's channel. He's been warning me for a while that I'd have to watch a Disney Channel movie with him down the road, and I guess that day has come with Smart House. To tell the truth, I grew up watching a good number of Disney Channel movies. I saw a majority of them when I was in middle school, and it was during that small window of time where I feel like Disney Channel movies were at their peak, and they made a lot of memorable films, whether or not they were any good. That's because the ages of the kids in those movies were roughly the same age as me, middle school aged, so I could relate to a lot of the stuff that was going on in these kids' lives. And to be 100% honest with you, uh, Smart House was actually one of these movies that I saw right around that time period and I do remember enjoying it. But it's now time to see how this thing holds up. So first of all, I wanted to start off with some positives. At the heart of the film, there's a warm family-centered story with a strong theme on grief. This is a family that somewhat recently lost a parent and that plays into what transpires throughout the film. So that's an emotional foundation. And when there's an emotional foundation, there's always a higher chance of human error, which is perfect for a man versus machine type of movie like this. Everything bad that happens in the movie's plot is due to human error based on that emotion. Past that, it obviously also plays off the uh, be careful what you wish for cliche because this film's main character is a child. So this kid thinks he knows what he wants and a machine doesn't know what's wrong or right. So learning from the kid, the machine basically grants his wish and all hell breaks loose. Also, don't forget the fact that this film was way before its time. It came out in 1999, almost a decade before the first smartphone came out and 12 years before Siri, the first virtual assistant. And that's essentially what this house is, a giant virtual assistant. So even though the entire movie falls a really bonkers and unrealistic premise, it's not super far-fetched as to what's possible. Smart houses have been seen in several iterations since this movie, just in more subtle fashions. This movie was like the very first Black Mirror episodes, if you think about it. But the film isn't without faults, not by a long shot. The quality of this movie is trash. I watched this on Disney Plus, and even though it's widescreen, you can tell it's just cropped full screen. Either that or somebody didn't know how to frame close-up shots of faces. The graphics in the movie are also pretty dang horrible. The extent of what this house can do makes zero sense because when it came out, the only internet that existed was dial-up or DSL. You see it at the very beginning of the movie, the dad can't make a phone call because his son is using the internet. Something that modern day can't relate to. You'd have to have grown up in that time period to know what that was like. Dial-up and DSL are both very, very slow internet speeds. In order for this house to do just one of its tasks, it would have to buffer for probably seven hours, maybe more, to gather enough information on that kind of setup. Sure, some things can be built into a massive local computer, but based on the information the house sometimes pulls, that would have had to be taken directly from the internet and they just didn't have super fast fiber optic internet yet. So what this house does is completely impossible, period. Plus the dad makes calls while living in the house, which is directly in conflict with its own set of rules. I also can't help but laugh at the music in the movie. You got the daughter singing and dancing to the Spice Girls. You got the son and his friends all accurately dancing to a boy band with perfect synchronicity. <laughs> So yeah, this film was before its time and it had a good foundation in Family Matters, but anything regarding how the film works on a technical level is pure unadulterated garbage. Let's take a look at my final score. From my unbiased technical score, that's 58%, because like I said, it's pretty bad, but not that much worse than what you might expect from a 1999 Disney Channel original movie. My bias score is much higher at 72% because it still has a twinge of nostalgia that you just can't ignore. Averaging out the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 65%. 65 out of 100 possible stars, grinding this movie with a letter grade of D. Kids these days would probably still enjoy it, even if it wouldn't be as fascinating as it was back in the day. I know my kid checked out the movie on a couple of occasions before going back to whatever the heck he was doing. And for the most part, nostalgia has kept this film alive. The best way that I can say it is that if I was asked to watch it again, I wouldn't mind rewatching it, but my heart wouldn't break if I never saw it again. Take that as you will. And I'll hand it back to Anthony. Don't forget to subscribe to his channel and...
Peace out. As usual, a big thanks to Interpreting the Stars for being here in this video to talk about Smart House with me. First of all, thanks man, I really appreciate you being down to watch this silly movie and just being able to give a full in-depth review of this Disney Channel original movie that came out when I was six years old. Oh man, there's so much more to say about this movie, but uh, yeah, big thanks to you. And as usual guys, you can find the link to his channel down below in the description box. Go give him some love, let him know I sent you. And again, my friend, thank you so much. I can't wait for the next collab. So yeah, you have this movie about this family that's in this house with this crazy mother-like figure, this computer program called Pat, that literally is just kind of taking over their lives. She's literally doing everything that she needs to do to be the most overwhelming mother because she feels like that's the way it needs to be done. She wants to bring them this sense of uh, maternal instincts and, and feeling in the house, but it becomes overbearing. And it, it is interesting to see the transition of the characters. And I think the last half of the film is the most interesting. It's really where the character of Pat, the computer program, kind of gets a little bit over the top, a little bit crazy. I mean, at first it was a bit overbearing, and then eventually she kind of becomes like this psycho program. And at a certain point watching this movie, I couldn't help but feel like this movie could probably be a really good horror movie. You know, this family moves into this house, and you have this super amazing AI system in the house that at first is making you meals and cleaning, you know, things up for you and waking you up at the proper time and able to project anything or play music for you anywhere and do essentially anything and over the course of the film starts to learn you and your family starts to learn your habits start to learn what you can and can't do what you're into what you're not into and over the course of the film becomes obsessive with you and wants you to only stay there with them and yeah it's a very interesting premise that i think could definitely lean into something like horror but yeah as far as how this movie goes performance wise yeah, you don't come to one of these Disney Channel original movies for the performances. The main kid, I don't know his name off the top of my head, and I probably should have written it down somewhere for notes, but no. I remember that he ended up going on to be in another Disney Channel original movie called The Luck of the Irish, which I will be reviewing at some point here on this channel. And then I remember seeing him later on down the line in Final Destination 3. I think he's the main character of that movie. So it is funny to kind of see his transition as an actor. I've seen him in a lot of other things since then. And I think the best actor in this movie is probably the dad played by Kevin Kilner. He's not fantastic. There's moments in the movie where he's definitely just kind of feels like he doesn't know what's going on. And that's what we're going to talk about in just one moment, the special effects in this movie. There's one really great sequence between Kevin Kilner, the father and the son in this movie where essentially they're going back and forth they're kind of a little bit of an argument because the son has just been rather disrespectful to the new woman the woman who actually sold him the house uh, the woman that his dad is actually interested in and uh, he was really disrespectful and obviously you can tell that it just comes up from his pent-up anger and, and feelings around you know his dad dating new women and that scene is definitely probably the most emotionally resonant for me I really enjoyed the back and forth between the dad and the son and specifically this moment where the son just just keep trying to cut off his dad and you know here's why you shouldn't date somebody here's why you shouldn't date this woman and yada 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 and eventually the dad just kind of shouts at him and goes you're not the only one who lost someone and I really enjoy Kevin Kilner's performance in that moment you believe it it is believable and I think that the way that they handled the idea of losing a parent and how that affects the other parent as well as the kids I think that was really well done in this movie so now let's talk about the special effects I mean everything from the CGI to the green screen in this film is really bad and another thing that I was just kind of blown away by was how bad the cinematography was and not necessarily the camera angles and all that jazz of cinematography you know it's a very plainly shot film it's very competently shot for what it is just the camera's there, the camera's here, the camera's there. There are very rarely moments where the camera is actually moving in a shot. But what really surprised me was how grainy the visuals were. And a lot of the Disney Channel original movies that I've, you know, revisited for this channel have been in their original format, you know, where it's kind of squeezed in for like old box televisions and where, you know, the sides on the right and left are blacked out. Whereas in this one, they, you know, they spread it out for widescreen. And man, there are moments where there's like wide shots where it is just so grainy. And I, I maybe it looks better on like a phone or something but watching it on Disney Plus on my pretty decently sized television I couldn't help but be like wow these effects do not hold up at all so yeah this movie is cheesy it's over the top but it does have a story and a message centered around you know moving on from the death of a parent what it's like for a kid what it's like for the other parent and you know it's also just a really silly fun movie is this a movie that I flat out recommend for people no I think that uh, going back and revisiting it I had a good time I appreciate Dave from interpreting the stars for watching this movie with me and reviewing it I loved hearing your thoughts on it my friend as usual you guys can find the link to his channel down 
down below in the description box. Go give him some love. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video and comment your thoughts on this movie. Have you ever seen this movie? Have you not seen this movie? Are you interested in this movie? I do recommend if you're just looking to check out something weird and something from, you know, an era that we never have anymore, definitely go check it out. There's definitely something to it. But yeah, this is a very cheesy film and it's not going to work for everybody. And I can see a lot of people getting bored of this film. So yeah, Smart House 1999 Disney Channel original movie. I was six years old and uh, it was fun to go back and revisit this nostalgic film for me. But uh, yeah, it's not fantastic and it does not age well. But I had a good time going back and rewatching it. Again, a big thanks to Interpreting the Stars. And as usual, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.